Hi folks, I've gotten a couple of questions over the last couple of days from folks that have been wondering how to use the spreadsheet, how to add new tickers to it if you want to track uh, new tickers. And I figured I'd record a video just to make it kind of clear what you need to do. So I'm starting out on, this is starting out on the overview sheet. Um, I am on the ad hoc tab. This includes a sort of high level overview of the different companies I want to track and the, their key financial metrics. So Let's say I've got a couple in here. Let's say I also want to track Netflix. So I try to type it in uh, to the sheet and as you can see, it's not uh, fully populating. There's a bunch of data that's missing. So where I will want to start is you wanna go to the to poll tab and what you'll want to do is you can see we've got a couple of different lists here. I want to also then add Netflix to the list of stocks that I want to pull data for. Uh, this is what the spread, this part of the spreadsheet is for. This is what tells my script later to figure out what types of stocks and tickers I need to pull data for in order to populate this sheet. So we've added Netflix there. One thing I'll also call out is that um, I also have this industries tab that you can use so that you can pull data by industry so you don't have to type out every single ticker. So as you can see, uh, I've got a couple of different uh, industries here. Um, let's see, we've got stuff like gold. Um, we've got all these different industries that are listed. And then on the right hand side of them, it's actually the number of companies in that category. So you get a sense of how big it is. As you can see, you can kind of click into and sort of uh, skim around just to get a sense of what the different companies are and see what you want to pull for. Let's say I want to go with discount stores though. So what I would do is I would then click on this particular checkbox um, and I'll click submit, which runs a script, which will then populate uh, the fields that I've checked into this industries list. So we've got everything set up here. What I'll now need to do is flip to my terminal. Um, I'm in the right directory. So this is where I've got all of my different stock scraping, stock data scraping scripts. And what I'll want to do is run this overview data Python script. So this is the script that pulls all the data that I need to populate this specific sheet. As you can see, it has gone ahead and pulled the different uh, tickers for the industry that I selected in addition to uh, all of the different uh, individual tickers that I've also chosen. So now it's going through and fetching all of their data uh, for those particular tickers. In the meantime, it's going to take a couple minutes for all that to fully pull and upload. So I'll just go ahead and talk through a couple of the different sheets that I've gotten here and uh, how it's sort of all organized. So if uh, you've already seen Roaring Kitty's uh, spreadsheets video, you will be pretty familiar with the structure of a lot of this. Uh, this is pretty similar, I will say, to uh, the format that he has. And I'll just sort of go through and highlight a couple of the key additions that I've made. So uh, as you can see, this is organized pretty similarly to what he has. There's a section for debt, regional, uh, indices, commodities, industries, uh, different styles of investing. One net new thing that I have added is that uh, I've also started to track the percent returns for both the S&P um, and I also have PE ratios. So this will come into play a little bit later on the next sheet. So this is the uh, ad hoc sheet that I mentioned before. This is where we sort of look at all the different tickers across the board and kind of, you can kind of compare them at a glance. Uh, one thing I will call out is that a couple of net new things is that in addition to, I think, all the columns that he had, uh, most of which are pretty similar on this sheet, I've also added two columns here that track basically your six-month return, trailing six-month return, so the last six months, in addition to the trailing 12-month return. And what it does is it calculates that for the uh, ticker, and then it also compares that to the S&P rates for over that same time horizon. So I actually have a conditional formatting rule where it actually highlights into green if that particular company has beat the S&P return over that same time horizon. So um, as you can see, uh, Google has, has sort of surpassed the S&P rate um, for the past six months and everything has kind of beat out the S&P over the last year. 
And so all our data is slowly starting to come in, as you can see. Um, and yeah, everything else here, I think the metrics that I'm tracking here are slightly different from the one he's tracking, but um, in general, it's the same sort of mentality. We also have the same insider data, insider uh, trading trades data that is also being tracked here. I guess for a lot of the big tech stocks, you don't see much of it, um, but there was a it looks like there's a little bit back six months ago for... Uh, for Amazon. So anyway, that is this particular sheet. Um, oh, I just saw apparently our script has now finished. And so as you can see, yeah, um, we're on this particular sheet. A lot of the data has started to fill in. We also have this net new Netflix uh, ticker that we had previously uh, didn't have data for. You can also add Walmart, which I think was one of the discount stores. And that will also go ahead and populate. But one thing that you, you will notice though, is that some of the data is formatted kind of weirdly. Like um, this particular column with revenues, with net income, the market cap is kind of weird. This is where we actually need to convert our data. Um, this is a bit of a side caveat, but this is basically an, uh, something that I had to build in because there is a bit of a bug right now in how the data is being uploaded into the sheet. So it's going to take a couple minutes for all the data uh, that we have to convert from being strings into back into being floats and numbers so that we can actually do number formatting. Um, so while that is running, I'll go ahead and finish out the rest of the sheet. So here's a, actually a net new sheet. This actually provides a prettier view for the raw insider data that I've scraped from Open Insider. So um, I've gone ahead and basically pulled uh, the last basically year of data, um, the last year of all the insider trades that have happened across all companies. Um, I'm only tracking the purchases that have happened. And so what I've done is basically organize it into this particular sheet oh, and sort of separate it out into different time horizons. So one thing that you can see is that um, I've got sections for the last week, the last two weeks, last month, three months, six months, and 12 months. And basically what this does is it's it's organized so that it tells me the different companies that have had insiders buy more stock over that time horizon, the number of insiders that have bought, and the uh, amount that uh, of stock that they have purchased. There's also some specific uh, conditional formatting here uh, in case, uh, for the particular cases and co of companies where they are past a certain threshold. So I think for my shorter time horizons, it's around five um, for, I think, one to two weeks. And then over the medium time horizons, it's, I believe, 10. Uh, and then for the longest time horizon, which is a year, it's like, I think, over 15. So that's the insider sheet. We've also got a sheet. Uh, so we've talked about the in industry sheet, so I'll skip over that. I've also actually got this relatively net new sheet uh, that tracks industry stats. So one thing you'll find I've, uh, as you look at right these different numbers is that you know you'll see percentages like okay, you know Apple or Microsoft they've got gross margins of you know forty percent almost seventy percent and net margins of you know around twenty five to forty percent, but it's um, oftentimes it's really difficult to contextualize some of these numbers right it's hard to know okay is this a good number or is this a bad number how does this uh, rate, rate relative to the whole industry. So this is where this industry stats sheet can come in pretty handy because what I've done is I've condensed a whole bunch of data uh, for uh, a lot of these key main financial stats and that's sort of organized and split by industry. So I've got a list of, I think it's around like a hundred or so, yeah, a hundred or so different industries and I've got the... Uh, the stats for uh, a lot of the key financial metrics uh, for for those particular industries. So as you can see, we've got gross margin across the board, net margin across the board. Um, and there's a couple of different key sections here. So these are a lot of the main sort of like financial statement metrics. The, this major section is around uh, the multipliers. So things like PE, uh, price over sales, things like that. Um, this middle section here sort of tracks like revenue growth numbers, uh, net income slash EPS numbers. Um, this section tracks uh, ROE and ROIC, which is return on invested income numbers. Um, and this next section here is more so around, uh, oh, costs and what they are as a percentage of revenue. So uh, you can see that, you know, I've got a couple of different key expense categories and, and the percentages here. 
This middle section is more so tr uh, around tracking debt, uh, cost of debt, um, percent of equity versus debt as a uh, percentage of total capital raised, um, information about CapEx and acquisitions made. This section is about working capital. And um, this last major section, I guess, is kind of interesting also. It's basically tracking the percent of stock that is owned by the CEO versus by institutional investors versus by uh, major insiders. I've also summed it so that you can get a sense of what um, sort of uh, – what percentage of, of stock is sort of taken up by these like major players versus how much is available in the free market. As you can see also on the top, one thing that's kind of handy is that it also gives you for that particular column, the value for the 90th percentile, 75th percentile, the median, which is the 50th percentile and the 25th percentile. So that as you're actually looking at the numbers, you can get a sense of where a company falls relative to the overall distribution. So one other thing I'll last mention is that another cool thing you can do with this is outside of just looking at this by industry, you can also um, sort, right, by uh, different metrics that you want to look at. So let's say I want to look at the industries that have the highest return on invested capital. What I can do is sort um, from Z to A, which will give me the highest industries uh, up at the top so I can get a sense of how these all stack rank. So as you can see, advertising has a really high uh, return on invested capital, as does tobacco and a couple of other ones. So yeah, so as you can see, uh, my script is now done running. Um, and if I go back to my main sheet, you'll see that now my data looks uh, proper again. Everything is showing up as, as is expected. My market cap show up as well as my revenue and net income numbers. So all of that looks pretty standard. So um, we've successfully uh, added these uh, net new tickers. One last thing that I'll also just add, I think that we didn't get around to is um, general criteria. So Another piece, uh, another tool that could be helpful is um, in the along the lines of getting context or for uh, trying to understand what good numbers are. I've actually gone through and uh, tracked, so I guess um, gone through and looked at some of the key criteria that a lot of uh, really big money managers use to filter and pick stocks. And so what I've done is um, for a couple of these key money managers, I've listed out what their criteria looks like. And then I've tried to go through and actually categorize for each major category, right? Under revenue growth, earnings growth, profitability, debt, ratio, stuff like that. Um, basically organize it just so that I can kind of get a sense. Um, and this is where I basically use this to help power some of the different conditional formatting that I've got going on. Um, I have a little bit less of it on this sheet than I have on my other sheet. Um, but yeah, something else I wanted to call it that might prove to be useful. So I uh, hope that is helpful and yeah, good luck.